Today is a slightly different vantage point from my normal periscopes because I wanted to have it right by the sink so I can show you guys how I clean my wire rack after I roast chicken. And so this weekend, I've been, actually this whole week, I've been working on this recipe. Oh, Paleo Gangsta, thank you for sharing this on your Facebook. Um, so if you saw my previous periscopes this week, I was working on this Vietnamese inspired chicken recipe and I think I perfected it and so I made it today and Henry helped take pictures, but now I have a dirty wire rack. And people ask all the time how I clean it. And so I'm gonna show you what I do to make sure that they stay sparkling clean because I love them. They are totally, totally indispensable and um, I really couldn't cook without these wire racks. So first of all, like, they're fresh out of the oven, so I'm gonna put away I guess most people would be serving their chicken, but because <laughs> we're going to a family party today, I have to put these away for later. And I'll be putting up this recipe on the blog, I don't know, sometime next week. But I do have a new recipe up there. I have um, my how to cook my pressure cooker spaghetti squash. Okay, so you guys can see here this rack is super gross. Oh, hello from Vallejo. Thank you for the hearts. So what I do now, I guess I'll just put this here, but yeah, the, the rack is totally gross and coated with stuff. Even when I've tried to like grease it, it always gets gross and this is normal. And so then I also put um, some foil to catch all of this stuff in the baking tray. So then I roll it up and cap it. And so this part, like some people are like, well, why, um, like, you can put this away because it is technically clean, but we want to wash this rack. So what I do is I flip it upside down. Do you see that? So I flip it upside down in the rack. I squeeze on a bunch of dishwashing liquid, and I like to put my dishwashing liquid in a squeeze bottle because this makes it really easy. Well, also, we get the Costco size, so I, <laughs> I put it in one of these little things but it also makes it really easy to wash dishes. And so then while I'm eating dinner, I just soak it in hot soapy water. And normally dinner lasts anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes. And by the time um, we're ready to do the dishes, all you have to do, actually this isn't super soapy. Yeah. Make more bubbles on it. But then when it's when you're ready, then you would flip the rack the other way around. And then I have this steel wool. And after this has been soaking for half an hour, let me move this out of the way, this, the stuff right on top of um, the rack should just come right off. And then after you've rinsed it, you can toss it into the dishwasher, which is what I do, or you can hand it off to your dishwasher, um, you know, whoever's doing the dishes, because you shouldn't have to do the dishes if you had to cook dinner, or at least that's my, that's what I think. So, um, if you don't have a sink that's big enough, no big deal. You just put this on the side of your sink, but you still soak the rack inside your baking tray. Remember, you just, you flip it upside down so that the, you know, the rack part is right up on the bottom of the baking sheet. And that's it. Um, it totally does get clean. Um, I wish I had examples of my other racks, but I think they're all over the house in different um, places, but they totally do get clean this way. And the reason they don't get clean for a lot of people is they just leave their rack, um, you know, on the side. And by the time they want to clean it, like you can't just, you know, scrape it off right away. You do need to, soak them uh, for a good half hour. So make sure that when you are about to go eat dinner, that you put it in your sink. What size pan is that? So this is called a half sheet. Um, when you buy baking sheets, you can buy full sheets and half sheets, but the standard size is actually a half sheet. People always think it's a full sheet, but full sheet is actually for uh, restaurant sized ovens. Most uh, home ovens will only fit half sheets. You wanna buy a half sheet, um, and then these half sheet racks. And the type of rack that I really like, um, and I think I link, in all my recipes, I try to link to the ones that, that I use, but I really like these stainless steel racks that um, 
have these squares because I think that um, the squares make sure that you know things don't fall through and the stainless steel makes sure that um, you know the paint doesn't come off because a lot of times when you buy chrome ones um, they will flake off and you can't just throw them in the dishwasher uh, the name please you know I'm not sure exactly which brand I buy I think there's one by CIA but just look for um, stainless steel and make sure that it's like the square grid um, but I think in almost all my recipes whenever I mention a wire rack I try to link to the one that I buy um, squares are easier than just flats exactly and then I think I also have this one which I think is fine but the squares make sure things don't fall through you have a rack for your toaster oven and yeah I think that they they come with racks um, I think the ones that come with your toaster oven though are chrome so you really should spend a teeny bit more money um, to get the stainless steel ones I think there really is only like a five dollar difference and it's totally worth that difference because um, you will not you, you won't ruin them ever because they're stainless steel and the paint doesn't come off and you can throw them into the dishwasher, which I think is the best. Um, oh, someone says, do you have a video for cast iron cleaning? I don't, but I do have a post on my blog. Just go to Nom Nom Paleo and search how to season a cast iron skillet and it tells you how I season my cast iron skillets, but there's an even better um, cast iron skillet tutorial if you just go Google Serious Eats. Um, I think J. Kenji Lopez all just did a really, really great um, write up about common myths um, and misconceptions about cast iron. Uh, my apron is actually from my sister. She bought me a Headley Bennett, um, and it's this little symbol, this little ampersand. My least favorite thing to clean. Yeah, oh, totally. So definitely you need to soak it as soon as you're done cooking, and it'll make it super, super, super easier to clean. Um, and I think that's about it. I hope you guys have a great Saturday. Thank you for tuning in to these scopes. Um, and again, if you want to pop on live, I, I guess you just need to turn on your, follow me on Periscope. Um, I'm either under Nom Nom Paley or Michelle Tam. And, it, and you can turn your notifications on so then you can hop on and ask questions live. Um, as I've said before in other scopes, I kind of just hop on when I think things will be useful. These are not pre-planned. Um, oh look, someone just wrote something awful. I want to block them. How do I block this person? Block user. There you go. Um, <laughs> okay, I think I finally blocked that person. Anyway, um, have a great weekend and I will talk to you guys the next time I have on. Bye. Yes, Diane, they are jerks. And if you don't follow Diane San Filippo, you must. She has the best cooking scopes, the best business scopes. She takes you on her walks and you can ask her all sorts of business questions. So follow Diane San Filippo. And yes, I hate trolls, but they're everywhere. And I actually, they don't really bother me anymore. And that is it. Someone says, oh, I hate I missed you. But you know what? You can totally watch these on replay on Periscope for 24 hours. You can go to catch.me slash nom nom paleo to watch all of my archive periscopes um and just follow me and you might hop on next time and be able to ask questions that's it adios bye